Hey, all right. Today we have Brad Hendrickson. He's president of the Midwest region at Adolfson and Peterson Construction. He's been in the role for nearly two years, but has been in construction for more than three decades. Uh, hey, Brad, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you very much for having me, JD. Yeah, of course. First, tell me a bit about your company and what you do in your role. So, uh, you know, as president of the Midwest region for Adolfson and Peterson, um, my job is really to to lead this whole group. And, and Midwest, that that to us is sort of everywhere to the south, kind of into Iowa, where our, our Colorado office would take off, and then sort of to the Illinois border into Montana. So, and everywhere in between. Um, you know, currently we have, uh, having said that, you know, for, for big or national contracts and, and customers, we will travel. Um, we're doing some work currently for 3M uh, as far away as Alabama. So, um, you know, again, if we have a relationship and, and we're lucky in, in Minneapolis for sure, because there are a, a bunch of Fortune 500 companies that that reside here or were started here and um, to be able to do repeat work for them, which the majority of our work is is repeat. Almost uh, 80% of our work is for customers that we've done at least one project for before. So, um, you know, my job is to make sure that that our teams have really, you know, uh, the tools that they need to be successful uh, on those projects, whether it's in the field, in the office, uh, in our, our pre-con or marketing efforts, whatever our teams need that, you know, we, we kind of practice servant leadership here. So, um, you know, making sure that the people who actually get the work done for us, you know, we're, we're a business where, where we don't make money unless our subcontractors and our, our workers actually put an hour worth of their time in, in the field. So. Yeah. Are there any projects current or recent that you've been especially proud of, or that have been especially exciting? Yeah, um, I, I would say, you know, from a green standpoint, uh, we're doing a bunch of work for for uh, for companies right now, cleaning up uh, waterways and stuff like that. So wastewater projects that are actually taking uh, chemicals out of the ground and, and cleaning up our environment. So our, our teams really love those. Um, we just are finished with a project at the downtown Minneapolis near the Twin Stadium called the Bus Garage where they're going to met Metro Transit will be able to to house uh, all their new buses and including a, a big electric system that they're putting in to, to have buses that aren't running on fuel uh, or fuel like like we're used to seeing. Right. They'll be they'll be a lot greener. So that's that's really that's a cool project. Um, you know, we, we won a couple of projects of the year this year. One was for a project uh, called Flagstone for Presbyterian Homes, which was an assisted living project. And then uh, we have a project in Lesur called the Minnesota State Security Hospital. So kind of kind of one of our tenants of 75 years of, of being in this business has been municipal correctional type work. But we're, we're starting to see a trend now with with the corrections work that we're doing being geared more towards behavioral health, which I think is kind of cool and, and really needed. So, you know, it's, it's got, yeah, it's, it's secure, right. In all the ways you'd expect it to be secure, but it's, it's a healing environment too, which is, which is really cool. That is very cool. Speaking of, um, you know, sustainable, <clears throat> excuse mm -hmm. me, sustainable practices, you guys were named the number one green builder among Minnesota contractors. Um, yeah recently completed your 100th LEED certified project. That's true. Can you tell me a bit about how your company has shifted to more sustainable building practices or taking on these kind of sustainability oriented projects? Yeah, um, you know, it's, uh, so I would say the market is certainly shifting that way. And it's always great, you know, having having been in the business for three decades and seeing how the world has evolved with certainly things like safety and, and stuff like that. It's great to see us starting to uh, become better stewards, right? I mean, I, I come personally from a farming background and, uh, you, you know, I always tell people you'll never find a bigger environmentalist than a farmer, right? I mean, you know, if you would, you would never see a farmer try to wreck their own land. So, right. um, you know, from construction standpoint, there's lots of things that, that we've, started to do and are doing whether it be trying to get you know more um electric vehicles into our fleet 
We're certainly diverting all of our trash away from landfills. But even to the extent, you know, we had a customer this year that that had um, a really big landscaping package that had a very unique kind of wood they wanted to use on the bench, which comes from a rainforest. And we said, you know, we've got a better idea. Let's go with something that's that's that kind of looks like it. Obviously, it's not wood. It's it's, you know, plastic, but it's you know, it's recycled material. It's reclaimed. And, you know, I think it's a better, a better product all the way around and they went for it. Right. So, so from our standpoint, one of the things, you know, in a lot of cases, we're not the designer, right. We're not the specifier of the product, but we don't let that stop us. We, we try and find products that are local so that they take, you know, less time on the road to get to us. Right. So they're not hauled from, you know, some coast, right. If there's something we can get locally here, that will fit the bill, we propose it. Now, are we successful all the time? No, but I, I think the cool part is that, you know, I've got a, a whole group of people and it's not just, you know, when we started our, our green initiative team here, when I got here, I thought, well, this is gonna be great. We're gonna have a bunch of young people that are gonna really fall in love with this. And they did, but it was amazing to see people that had actually been at AP for 30 years jump on board going, you know what, here's something we could do. Here's something we could do. And, and so the, the energy that we're getting out of that is really good for our team. I mean, I think they're, they're super engaged. I mean, I, I just heard a story today, that team is out trying to find, you know, we're trying to baseline, not only our carbon footprint, but like the typical carbon footprint of a, of a project so that we can look at, you know, what things can we change to even reduce it further. So I, I really, it's, it's interesting time. And, um, you know, one of our, one of our important goals as a company going forward is environmental stewardship. I mean, we've, um, we've recently started helping and working with Great River Greening. Um, you know, I have groups of people even down on the Mississippi, just cutting buckthorn, you know, it, it's, you know, part of our thing is, you know, we, we always say we build communities, trust and people. And, and so when you're building and you, and you want to live those things, right. It's what you do in your own community that really matters. Right. And so, you know, we can't have been here for 75 years and not, you know, I look out every day and I drive by a project that long before I got to AP was built by AP and I go, wow, just, you know, it'd be awesome to just put little dots on a map all over for 75 years worth and go, what an impact this company has had. Right. For real. Um, things seem to be a little tough in construction right now. Yeah. Is, is that right? Could you speak, could you speak to some of those sure. challenges that are, that are occurring at the moment? Sure. Um, you know, I think that um, I, I'll say this a couple of different ways. I, I think that, you know, you've had, it's like, we can't catch a break. Right. I mean, we've had a couple of years of pandemic, which certainly has not gone away. Right. And and now we've got influenza, you know, a around here. And so there's there's that piece of it. I'll say the pandemic piece. Um, and then you've also got the what happened because of it. Right. You know, you look at the whole world. The supply chain is just much different than it was for us. And it seems to change every month. It's one day it's copper. The next day it's glass. The next day it's drywall. You know, so products we need to actually go out and build are are stressed. So that's really bad. Labor, I mean, we're in a market right now, even today, where it's tough to, you know, if I, we don't typically have to call the hall because we have uh, some great union employees that work for us. But, you know, if we do have to call the hall, there's just not the people like the, everybody's busy and that's you know you would think that's a great thing but it certainly is is hurting delivery times schedules um and then being able to actually put our our finger on what things should actually cost if you don't know you know who's building it so um so so there's there's all of those things are happening and then you know on top of that it's like when i say we can't catch a break you know, now we've been through this spike of interest rates, right? So the people we're doing work for, if they're not state or, or federally funded, right? If it's a developer driven project, which a lot of our customers are, you know, now all of a sudden where they were getting money very cheap, 
it's not cheap anymore. And and so then that that causes projects to delay and in some cases even stop. I mean, you know, we're there's certain markets where like the multifamily market, um, you know, there's lots of those projects out there. I I, I don't know that financially they're going to all get built, at least not today, right? I think they're all very needed. Um, but I don't know that that financially they're going to make a lot of sense for for people to say, hey, I want to put money into this, right? And then expect a return. Sure. So it's this weird place of this kind yeah. of unprecedented demand, but all of yep. these challenges. Are you seeing any new innovations or trends coming into the industry? Or is AP yep. doing getting creative to respond to some of these challenges? Yeah. So I mean, I, I will say this. I, I think that uh all of these things. Like I, I hate, I always I, I always try and look at things kind of half full. Um, I think that the pandemic certainly taught us how to, you know, like our job sites have never been cleaner, right? So that's a good thing, right? And so we learned something. Mm-hmm. Um, we've also learned that, you know, if you have something that you're scheduling, you have to make sure that you can get it, right? The the, the days of just going, yeah, I don't need it for a year. I don't have to worry about it. Right. You can't do that anymore. So, so I think it's, it's, it's really, if you look at it from a positive standpoint, you know, I always tell people in, in my three decades of construction, it's always something, right. It's never been easy. There's, you know, it, it's never been like this, but you know, back in the in the late 80s when I started in this business it was something else right and you know and I've certainly lived through a couple of recessions and and, and stuff like that in my career so it's there's always something out there um you know I think one of the things that has helped us is most of our customers like I said are repeat customers so we're we're more than willing uh to have that conversation with them and say hey look right there's a there's a supply chain issue here. We could, here's the options, right? Let's lay everything on the table. Let's come at it like a team would and, and go from there. And I think that, uh, that by and large, that's really, really saved us. Yeah. I've heard that a lot, that these relationships are really key to addressing things, especially when you think of, yeah, the supply chain and having those relationships with people. So how are you seeing kind of the Midwest construction economy faring compared to maybe other parts of the country. Do you have a pulse on that? Yep, I do. I mean, well, I have a pulse in so much as we have offices in Arizona, Texas, Colorado. Um, I can tell you that that across the country, we're we're all very, very busy. I mean, it's it's maybe, you know, if I I always can kind of gauge how the market's doing by what what's going on in my pre-construction department. And, you know, we keep having to add people to that department um, when we can, because it's, it, it, you know, there really is a lack of um, people, right, to, that are out there looking for work, right, still, I mean, it's, it's, the market is still very strong in that regard, it's tough to find, you know, the kind of people that you need to, to produce the work that you want. Um, but we have, we have a ton of work, literally, in our pre-construction department, you know, we have a bunch of work that that wants to start, but I think one of the things that we're going to see, and, and we're seeing it across sort of the areas where we're working right now, is I call them false starts, to use a sports analogy, right? I mean, a project that was supposed to start in January now won't start until spring, you know? And, and so those things can get pretty troubling as you're trying to guarantee prices and, you know, we're still getting a lot of things that you know, sub trades can't guarantee from their suppliers material quotes for 120 days. So we have to be have to be very nimble and have to be very clever. And again, it gets back to communicating, right? If I hear something, something's changing and you're my customer, JD, I would call you and say, hey, listen, I'm hearing that in 30 days, steel's going up this much a ton. You know, we we should we should do something about that to protect, you know, what we need for the project. Yeah, so I'm I'm guessing you're busy just because of this backlog of demand and, yeah. and projects maybe taking longer because of the supply chain. Do you think there's an impact just from the changes that are happening in, in how the market works? Just I know there's been this crazy industrial boom from e-commerce, uh, multifamily is is going crazy. 
Um, do you have any, any thoughts on that? Just how how things have changed kind of in this, you know, quote unquote, post pandemic type of world? Yeah, I think I think from my standpoint, I think there's I mean, I think what will. So one thing I would say is that if if there's a recession or if we're in a recession right now, you know, one of the things that that we're not it's not lost on us is that uh, in construction, we typically trail by 12 to 14 months a recession because we have, like you said, all this work that's in the pipeline right now that still needs to get built, right? And so I, I, you, if the economy is doing something, you know, or if you believe that, or if you believe we're in a recession, then in 12 months, that's when it'll hit my house, right? And and so we are pivoting, trying to um, make sure that we're not leveraged into just one market sector, right? We try and recession proof our business. Like we have, we have an office in Duluth that specializes in certain types of work. Down here, we specialize in, you know, about five different types of construction, whether it be K through 12, whether it be developer led work, uh, multifamily type work, um, and, uh, and whatnot, municipal work, correctional work, and water infrastructure work. So, so having all of those kind of puts us in a great spot for if, if one part of the market falls off, we can, uh, we can, we can deal with it, what happens next. Right. So that yeah. that's good and helpful for us. And I, I guess the other thing I would say is um, the, uh, the, the market, I think, you know, because we kind of didn't get a budget passed last year, I think there's still a bunch of state work that's that's out there that once they can come to some agreement on that, uh, there's going to be another little in, influx of new work, which is good for us. It's good for, for Minnesota. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was what the WPA that really helped to pull mm -hmm. us out of the Great Depression yep. uh, and create jobs that, yeah. Um, so all that being said, are you feeling optimistic or concerned about the future of construction in Minnesota? No, I, I think, I think we're going to be just fine. I, I think, uh, you know, I would, uh, I would put our, um, our workers by and large up against anyone in the country for productivity. I mean, we, we have a really strong Midwest work ethic and, you know, I couldn't be prouder of the men and women that that go to work for me every day and, and do it safely and put together a quality product. I, I think we're going to be just fine. I, I think there's enough work out there uh, for us to continue to grow and be successful. Um, yeah. Will there be slowdowns? Sure. But like I said before, you know, it, that that's normal, right? That some of that stuff is just normal that, you know, you're going to, you know, economy expands for seven years and then it retracts a little bit. And then, you know, it's kind of like the price of gas, right? I mean, yeah. Do you, I mean, at the end of the day, we all still need it. So, you know, I mean, it really kind of doesn't matter how much it costs. You're still going to want it. You sure. need it. You have to have it until there's something better, right? Which could right. be the next green solution. And you now I'm sure there's lots of smart people in, in the state of Minnesota working on the next big thing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Brad, I appreciate the insights. Um, I don't have any other questions. Was there Great. anything you wanted to add that I didn't ask about? No, JD. Thank you for taking the time today. It was, uh, I had a good time talking to you. Yeah, me too. Thanks a lot. Right. Take care. Take care, man.